you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Week in Recap on the Courtside Financial Podcast, a segment where we bring you a compilation of everything that went down throughout the week from a story's perspective. Before we get into this video, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss out on any content that's coming in the future. Anyways, these solid state batteries will be available on the ES6 starting this month and supposedly when paired with the ES6, they're going to offer 577 miles of range. When they first announced it in 2021, they said when paired with the ET7, it'll offer 600 miles of range. So why did it take NEO so long to bring their solid state battery to market? Let's explore this intriguing question and shed some light on the situation from my perspective. So I think we'll start with the greater question of what is a solid state battery and provide some context around it. Solid state batteries have garnered significant attention due to their advantages over lithium ion batteries. One factor that has influenced the transition to solid state batteries is the significant expense of lithium ion batteries. Lithium prices remain considerably high, making the lithium mining industry very profitable today. Lithium is an essential material for battery production given its potential to effectively store energy. However, like I mentioned, the cost of lithium ranges from $5,000 to $8,000 per ton, which is very high. These costs have a considerable impact on the cost of lithium ion battery, and subsequently they affect the affordability of electric vehicles because the battery is the most expensive component most of the time. As electric vehicles continue to become more prevalent, the demand for lithium has surged well. Despite efforts to optimize lithium um, extraction and production techniques, the cost still remains high. And that marks a challenge for battery manufacturers and automakers. This is where solid state batteries offer a potential solution. Solid state batteries employ a mix of different materials, such as solid electrolytes, which reduce or eliminate the need for lithium. As a result, solid state batteries may reduce some dependency on lithium, potentially mitigating the impact of high lithium prices on battery production costs. While solid state batteries are not free from their own cost challenges, their development and adoption may open up new doors for the electric vehicle industry to explore alternate materials that are similar or even better than lithium as far as their energy storage capability. So at NEO Day 2021, NEO actually announced or unveiled their solid state battery and said that it will have 600 miles of range when paired with the sedan that they also announced simultaneously, the ET7. So if NEO announced this at NEO Day 2021, we're now in 2023. Um, seven months into the year pretty much. Why was there such a huge gap between announcing this and actually um, almost rolling it out? My thoughts here is that one significant hurdle was achieving cost parity with current battery technology. The transition from lithium ion batteries to solid state batteries requires substantial investment. Investments in R&D and production infrastructure. Scaling up and achieving mass production of solid state batteries is going to take time regardless. While the technology might have shown promise in 2021, one, it most likely needed to be refined and optimized for large-scale manufacturing. NEO likely spent considerable time and resources to ensure that their solid-state batteries met the necessary quality, safety, and performance standards. Another factor to consider here is the complexity of solid-state batteries. While traditional batteries use um, liquid or a polymer gel, solid state batteries utilize solid electrolytes. This change in the composition of battery technology poses a lot of engineering challenges that have not really even been seen too much by the industry yet. Anyways, these solid state batteries will be available on the ES6 starting this month and supposedly when paired with the ES6, they're going to offer 577 miles of range. When they first announced it in 2021, they said when paired with the ET7, it'll offer 600 miles of range. So we're assuming because a SUV is probably a little bit bigger and uh, heavier than a sedan, that's why you're losing a little bit of range. But that's still fantastic range compared to what we're seeing with electric vehicles across the board here today. Hopefully, NEO can continue to progress their efforts in solid state batteries and really redefine the entire industry. This could be a big play later on down the road for them. Maybe other 
auto manufacturers will want to procure their batteries from NEO if it ends up working out. Last week, we witnessed a slight decline in insurance registrations from new energy vehicle makers in China. It's not uncommon for deliveries to slow down at the beginning of the month. However, NEO has still managed to put up impressive numbers in my opinion. The stock is also rallying as they captured the attention of investors who are eagerly awaiting this uptrend that is expected to come in June. But what makes NEO stand out from its competition? in my opinion. Well, let's take a look at some key delivery figures. While NEO's competitors like Li Auto or Xpong experienced declines in sales, NEO managed to hold its ground as a second ranked brand selling 3,100 units. This may represent a decrease compared to the previous week, but if we zoom out, this is good news for NEO compared to what we've been seeing lately. The past two months, NEO delivered around 6,000 and 6,900 um, vehicles. So for them to do this in just uh, from July 3rd to July 9th is still very good. It's also important to note that NEO caters specifically to the market of battery electric vehicles where a competitor like Li Auto is a plug-in hybrid, meaning that it can operate off of electric charge and gasoline. In June, battery electric vehicles accounted for 23.7% of all vehicles sold in China. That's huge. This growing trend indicates a shift to more sustainable transportation, and NEO is right at the forefront. NEO has not only captured the hearts of consumers with their exceptional lineup, but they've also captured the eyes and the funding of investors who are eyeing the company for an uptrend in deliveries as they've been lagging behind the competition for around the last 60 days days here. NEO has been a game changer in the electric vehicle industry. Focus on battery electric vehicles and their dedication to customer experience has, re has resonated with consumers. The anticipation surrounding NEO's um, June deliveries is a testament to their strong brand and market presence. The excitement surrounding NEO is palatable. While other automakers like Tesla face challenges in regards to deliveries on export, NEO is primed to make a splash in the domestic market, which would be China for them. Tesla's sales, which experienced a significant drop last week, highlight the unique position that NEO holds. It's not just about the numbers though. NEO's exceptional lineup, including the all new ES6 and the ET5 Touring, has captured the imagination of drivers around the world. And now, investors are eagerly awaiting these delivery numbers because that could help the stock sustain its uptrend. As we know, the stock market is driven by anticipation and projections. The, with NEO's deliveries dropping from 12,000 in February to around 6,000 in May, having these um, June figures come out and being positive could help NEO stock rally to new heights that we haven't seen in quite some time. And of course, according to Edison Yu at Deutsche Bank, uh, NEO could reach 20,000 units delivered per month in the third quarter of this year. That's a bold prediction. I'm pretty optimistic. Um, I'm hoping for 17,500. I'll be happy if we get that. But anyways, the point here is that there's a lot of positive momentum building up around NEO and the company. And it seems like if you rewind 60 days or if you rewind 30 days, everything was pretty much negative. So it looks like we, we could reach an inflection point here. Our first story today revolves around Neil's decision to postpone their mass production of in-house batteries. According to a report from 36 Krypton, Neo has encountered several challenges, making them have to move forward with this project on a different timeline. These hurdles include underwhelming sales in the first half of the year and also decreasing prices of lithium. While Neo had originally planned to commence mass production in 2024, the new timeline remains unknown. This delay is undoubtedly a setback for Neo as they aim to reduce their reliance on traditional battery suppliers. Nevertheless, this delay can be interpreted as a prudent move by NEO to be cautious with their expenditures. In the face of mounting competition from other electric vehicle makers, NEO may be adjusting their strategies to ensure a stronger market position. Now let's shift our focus to NEO's recent performance. In a recent research note published by Morgan Stanley on July 11th, 
They offered their insights into Neo's exceptional performance. They believe that Neo is benefiting from positive sentiment in the sector, causing their monthly sales to increase. Morgan Stanley believes that Neo will deliver an impressive 15,000 vehicles in July. And additionally, the team highlighted that Neo's order intake reached its peak for the year. While these developments are promising, Morgan Stanley expects Neo to continue meeting or exceeding investor expectations to fully restore investor confidence. Now let's turn our attention to Neo's safety ratings. The Neo ET5 sedan and the Neo ES7 SUV recently obtained the highest possible five-star rating in the Euro NCAP safety test. The Euro NCAP recently published these ratings, affirming that NEO has performed exceptionally well in all categories used to score the vehicle. It's important to note that the 2023 standard of safety has become more rigorous, making it challenging for vehicles to achieve these high scores that NEO has achieved. Nevertheless, the ET5 received a five-star rating across all categories, including child occupant protection, adult occupant protection, pedestrian occupant prote protection, and safety assist. The NEO ES7 also received a five-star rating across all these categories except for pedestrian protection where it received a four-star rating. These ratings mark NEO's commitment to safety and protection as they show that their vehicles truly go above and beyond when it comes to that. To summarize today's news, NEO's decision to postpone mass production of in-house batteries poses a challenge for the company. However, it still shows their prudence when it comes to managing their finances and adapting to challenging market conditions. Additionally, Morgan Stanley's positive outlook for the company and NEO's five-star rating for the ET7 and the ES7 are very encouraging and positive signs for the company as well. On June 15th, Yushin announced that they would be receiving up to $315 million uh, in capital uh, from a bunch of investors such as NEO Capital and Joy Capital. We'll update on that. On July 12th, it was announced that they had received uh, $100 million of that of uh, that up to 315 million in aggregate funding. So in essence, the company issued out around 291 million convertible notes, which is equivalent to 97 million uh, shares. The company's convertible note holders, including 58.com, TPG, and Warbug Pincus have converted their convertible notes into aggregate principal amount of 69 million into 66 a million class a ordinary shares equivalent to 22 million american depository shares so concurrently more than 10 important investors including neo capital joy capital and the above mentioned convertible note holders have agreed to not sell their shares of the company for a period of nine months starting july 12th so nine months from july 12th the clock is ticking closing of the remaining tranches are subject to the terms and conditions stipulated in the agreement anyways now we can get to the good stuff what i really wanted to talk about was william lee being placed on the board of directors for yushin mr william ben lee is the founder of neo and has been the chairman of the board since neo was established and its chief executive officer since march 2018 we already knew that in 2000 mr lee co-founded beijing bit auto e-commerce co ltd and served as the director and president until 2006 from 2010 to 2020 mr lee served as the chairman of the board of directors at bit auto holdings uh, limited and a leading automobile service provider in china formally listed on the new york stock exchange in 2002, Lee co-founded Beijing Creative and Interactive Digital Technology Company uh, Limited and served as its chairman. President and director Mr. Lee received his bachelor's degree in sociology from Peking University, really a uh, big, important, prestigious university in China, by the way, for those of you who haven't done your research on this man so far. He's done a lot of things, very ambitious CEO, stops at nothing to get it done and stops at nothing to strive for more. Mr. Kun Dai, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Yushin said, we warmly welcome our new board members and are honored to benefit from the experience of these four distinguished experts. 
Yushin is at a critical stage of development following our successful business transformation. I believe our new board members will bring invaluable guidance to our business development and strategies going forward. On behalf of the board of directors, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Mr. Chang uh, Chung Lun Julian, Mr. Quang Cheng Sun, Mr. Li Kong, Mr. Mu Yan Wong, and Mr. Shun Lam Stephen Tang, and Mr. Yang Zong Huang for all their dedicated services to the board and contributions to the company over the years. We wish them great success in their next endeavors and look forward to working with them on other opportunities in the future. Forgive me if I said any of those things wrong. It's not my native tongue, but obviously there's been a swap out between the board members and these new members are going to bring invaluable experience to this new company that's turning around which we caught at the inflection point. So that's great news for investors, but let's dive a little bit more into it, specifically from the uh, perspective of what value is William Lee gonna bring to the company. Now I've talked about the conviction that this man has in the used car market before, right? In multiple videos on multiple occasions, you know, you can go back and watch those, but essentially to sum it up, doing my research, I found that um, William Lee has actually done business with uh, Yushin before he's actually done a partnership with them investing in them through companies uh, that he's uh, we just talked about bit auto that he's been at uh, he's done a deal with them there uh, in the past he's actually also invested his own money into it one of the first big investors to give the CEO uh, an initial investment you can look this up it's all on the internet it's facts you just have to do the digging but it's out there and it's also on the channel so if you want to double down and go watch those videos they're still very relevant today but ultimately what this means is that back then he had a lot of belief and uh, conviction in the used car market question that we ask ourselves today is does he still have belief and conviction in the used car market Number one, obviously he's on the board, but number two, we could have told you that way before this uh, video even happened, way before this deal even happened, way before he was put on the board. Uh, and why is that? Because NEO started their own used car pro uh, program. So obviously if he's implementing something that he thinks is going to be huge in the future in his own company, he still has a lot of conviction in it and attaching those words to the, w and attaching those ideas to the words that he said, um, years ago years and years ago you can obviously draw the conclusion that this man really does believe in the used car market in china uh we're not going to get into why is that but just very high level obviously they don't want all those cars to go to waste yes they are trying to go completely electric but there needs to be a nice movement or a meaningful movement through the ecosystem um, of the cars that are already existing in inventory and figure out a way to make money off of those type of things and he understands that so i digress but somebody like william lee being on the board for yushin what does that mean for the company let's go from there well this is not just the guy that kept neo in the game when they were on the verge of bankrupts this is a guy that's regarded by many as the godfather of transportation in china he's had his hands in so many different ventures not only is he an industry expert in the truest sense of the word but he's also someone who people throw money at to invest he can raise capital with the snap of a finger expertise is going to be crucial not only because he has all this experience but and he's knowledgeable uh in certain situations and how to go about uh, certain things as it pertains to the automotive industry but also because businesses need money to continue to run there's going to be tough times there's going to be challenges ahead at the end of the day you've got to be able to put that conviction into investors you've got to be able to raise money something elon musk does very well that's something that william lee also does very well in neo he can raise money with the snap of a finger so uh bringing that conviction over to a company like Yushin being very public about it is obviously going to attract a lot of investors um, for the hard times and having uh, so many industry experts on the board who I'm not even 100% familiar with but they seem to have swapped out um, the existing board members for these guys um, it just sounds like it's going to be a very good route for or at least the path is looking very good for uh, Yushin looking forward 
So I want to know what you guys think about William Lee taking a place on the board. Do you think that's a net positive for the company, net negative for the company? Where do you think the company's gonna go after this with some information like this? So to start us off, let's set the stage with what William Lee is actually saying, then I'll give my opinion on the entire situation here. William Lee said in an interview, the world should be more open and stop politicizing business. The global political climate has become totally different from that when we set up our company back in 2015, especially after the pandemic stirred up division and antagonism. So basically, William Lee is calling on the U.S. government to provide equal access to the U.S. market for Chinese built Chinese manufactured EVs, I should say. He also points out and contrasts the treatment of the Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, in China, where he was warmly received by uh, senior Chinese government officials. Um, he also said Chinese consumers have a wide range of new energy vehicles to choose from. Why can't these same products be enjoyed by U.S. consumers as well? So obviously entering the U.S. market is not without its challenges. There's a very substantial anti-Chinese sentiment and a lot of rhetoric going around in this country. Um, and it sparked protests against Chinese companies setting up their own operations here. The sentiment obviously raises concerns about the possibility of the US banning imports of Chinese made parts or technology. And this just adds further complexities for Chinese car makers trying to establish their foothold here. William Lee is clearly acknowledging that NEO needs to address its domestic demand issues before attempting to expand into the U.S. market. But I think that the historical context of Tesla and China provides valuable insight into the challenges that electric vehicle manufacturers face when entering foreign markets. Tesla had its own early struggles in China. They encountered high tariffs and they were limited in their ownership of local businesses. This highlights the importance of addressing barriers to entry and advocating for fair market access. The fact that Tesla has had to engage in a lot of negotiations and endure so much scrutiny uh, just to gain um, semi-favorable terms demonstrates that this problem isn't just unique to NEO, although it is a problem. These challenges are often rooted in geopolitical tension and the intricacies of international relations. So, while I do understand and I do agree with what William Lee is saying about his unfair treatment when it comes to the US market, it's crucial to realize that international trade is complex and often requires give and take situations. The US and China have had their fair share of uh, trade disputes, and these obviously impact the dynamics of trade for both countries. As the second largest car market globally, the U.S. offers a lot of opportunity for NEO amongst other Chinese um, electric vehicle manufacturers. The suggestion to establish local production facilities to avoid tariffs on imports is a strategic move that can uh, hugely benefit NEO as a company. Tesla's approach of doing this with Giga Berlin and Giga Shanghai have kind of shown others that this doesn't just address market access issues, but it also can build trust and foster stronger ties with local communities. It creates job opportunities and mitigates logistical challenges. Certainly, it's also important to address the recent developments around Tesla's pricing in China. Tesla, who started the price war, has recently pledged to put an end to the price war in China. And obviously, they did this to gain market share, which was working out very well. While Tesla has not publicly stated all their motivations um, for ending the price war or agreeing to end the price war, we can obviously assume that one of their motivations was to better, man better manage um, political tensions in China. This aggressive pricing strategy might have had some unintended consequences for Tesla, although, as I just mentioned, it was pretty it's been pretty successful. Some of those consequences could be sparking tensions with local competitors, number one, and then also with uh, Chinese regulators. The Chinese automotive market is strategically significant for Tesla because it's the biggest EV market in the world. Maintaining positive uh, relationships with China is crucial for a foreign company that wants to operate in, the, in this market. By pledging to end the price war, Tesla may be signaling its uh, commitment to fostering a more stable and cooperative business environment. Navigating the complexities of international business requires an understanding of local dynamics, political considerations, and market sensitivities. 
for Tesla striking a balance between being competitive and harmonious is likely a key consideration in their business decisions. In summary, while the challenges of Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers uh, entering the US market is very real and very significant, there are potential avenues for growth and acceptance. It's going to be essential for both sides to engage in a constructive dialogue along the way, address concerns and present mutually beneficial solutions that provide value on both sides. That's going to be it for this episode of Week in Recap for the Courtside Financial Podcast. If you found any of this information valuable, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button and definitely leave a comment down below. Genuinely interested in hearing what you guys think about these new uh, this new style of videos that we're doing. Anyways, that's going to be it. I'll catch you guys next time.